What's up, fellas? In this video, we're gonna be building this waste oil burner nozzle here. This is a siphon nozzle that I've put together. And essentially what we've got going on here is, in the back here, we have a O-ring packing that enables me to throttle this air needle in and out, or the cap stand, whatever we're calling this today. By positioning this pin stock in and out, of the uh, nozzle, we were able to alter the spray pattern and the air-fuel ratio. So definitely a far superior siphon nozzle compared to the one that I have over here. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. This one here just doesn't put off enough energy. I want something that operates in the 100, in the 100 kilowatt range at least, 100,000 watts. And I'm thinking this nozzle is definitely going to do it. This is going to be a good build, guys. I uh, was very pleased with how effective this thing is. However, I have not yet hooked it up. The system runs at about 5 inches of mercury vacuum. I decided to just go ahead and hook that gauge up for, for kicks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this thing uh, worked out pretty good. Definitely pleased with its performance don't like the shape of it too much it's going to kind of sit on the system sideways but uh a guy could modify that if he needed to all this stuff is things that i already had in my little trash bin here so didn't cost a dime to build this bad boy definitely liking that I have the regulator set at 50 psi definitely pumping oil Ooh, that is very chunky. Probably still got a lot of air in the system. Okay, I'm not thinking I like that. I'm gonna push it all the way to the very end, and see what happens. This is the uh, smallest thing. That's a nice little spray pattern there. Okay, I'm attempting to round off this piece of tubing. I'm not a machinist. <laughs> not know how well this is gonna go. I don't know if I like that angle. Oops. In order to pay attention. Well, it's actually pushing me back. Seems to be working. Not bad. I might have overdone it a little bit, but I can always cut the top of that off. Sorry for the poor lighting. I'm not a very good cameraman either, apparently. I'm basically trying to make a siphon nozzle. A much better one than what I'm currently using. It has a higher flow rate. So, decided this would be what I'd start off with. I wanted to try to make a conical shape. What I'm going there for is a divergent nozzle. So, this may not, uh, please spare me the penis jokes. Here, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so if I have a inner nozzle here, 
for my uh, air input that will cause the air to crimp down into this narrower channel increasing its velocity and at which point it will do this and we're going to get a vacuum there at the same time oil will be getting pulled into this stream through mere collision and the vacuum that's going to be caused from that collision so now a better the one of the most ideal nozzles would be something that looks like this it's a gradual slope and you have your air well i'm way off and the air nozzle is like up here the steam nozzle whatever they're using for the injector and it sprays like this convergent divergent and then back out this way again but i'm trying to atomize it i'm not trying to pump that's a pump we're doing an atomizer i probably ought to look at some cross sections of airbrush equipment see what they got going on because that's kind of what we're doing here but for the most part that's where i'm going with this cone shape except this time i've kind of made it more of a cone action yeah you get the point i don't think youtube could handle cross sections that look like penises so <laughs> i'm going to spare myself the comments on that one you guys get the point let's pull this thing out of here and see what we got I'm kind of happy with how that turned out. I tried it with just a drill at first, but I just did not have the force and the torque. Curious as to what that looks like on the inside. Now I am going to chop that off right there to a, a little bit cleaner of a hole. It's probably a fairly decent size. Now. It, there's going to be another tube that goes inside of this for my air rod. Don't know what I'm going to use for that just yet. Maybe something about this size here. And I'm going to try to have that positioned inside of there. Maybe right about in that area. I don't know. I'm going to set up a system that can be um, calibrated to achieve the optimum position. So that's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna to have to devise some type of way of throttling this. I have the impression that a O-ring setup that allows me to simply move this back and forth would suffice. So if I got a couple of O-rings and somehow uh, made that happen, that might work out. Let's see what I can do. I need a better tube. I'm running real low on hardware. I need, need to go do some shopping, but I'm broke. I'm car poor right now. But at any rate, I'll get back to this when I've got uh, this thing put together a little bit more. And we'll see how it turns out. I don't know if I like that cone or not. Not really a cone. Maybe I should hit that corner at a different angle. To cone it up a little better. Hard to say. Well, that didn't turn out too good. You can see that distinctive triangular three lobe shape. That's from the three jaws of the chuck. A weak spot in the pipe giving in and it flexed in those regions, causing that shape. I tried to face that off and open up that hole, but it didn't work out too good. So this might end up being too big of a hole yet. I may have to try that one again. Hopefully we'll get it back to rounds here somewhat. Not that it really matters. I don't think a triangular shape hole would hurt much. Uh -oh. 
shocks loose. So, that looks a little better. It's not coming out near as what I wanted though, as usual. This lathe is pretty much junk. I got screwed into buying that. I put quite a bit of money into this thing too, unfortunately, but you live and you learn, man. Never again. So I think I've come to the conclusion that the only way to do this is to round it off until it completely closes up and then drill a new hole through it. Because I have the inner cleft inside of here that's just not going to be very conducive to flow. And I can't really get it out of there very easily. It's making the hole too big. I'm already too big of a hole. So I'm going to try it again. Okay, that's starting to round it off pretty good. I might stop it there and just try and drill a hole through now. That's a really small hole. I wonder what it looks like inside. Interesting. <clears throat> I've got to get a new lathe. I got about a thousand dollars in this thing or more. I'm not too uh, happy with myself. And that's kind of a big hole there. I wonder if I should go a size smaller. This thing is off on the center and everything. Jeez. Hoping this is it. Not interested in learning how to run a lathe tonight. <laughs> I'd rather just get this done. It looks a lot better. A little bit of cleanup. I might really get that to work halfway decent. Man, I am just uh anybody want to buy a lathe? A thousand bucks. That's what I got in it. I painted this thing, restored it, put a new motor on it. And it's just, uh, it's not for me. You might be able to do something with it though. I don't know what. Some guys just need the parts off of it. You know, there is a lot of parts you could probably use. Okay, what I've done here is now I've cut a section of this barrel out. And the inner nozzle will slide in there like that. And we are gonna fine tune this thing by pulling this rod back and forth to determine the optimum position because there is definitely a sweet spot on these things so this is going to slide into here like this I don't have a camera set up at the moment so forgive me for that if you would and it's going to stick out just a little bit like that and that's going to be the front of the nozzle and our connection point will be right there 
I decided to do that rather than drill a bunch of holes in this thing. I'm hoping that will be good enough. It might, um, it should flow just fine like this. I don't see why it wouldn't. I wish I wouldn't have put my O-ring pack in yet, or at least made it permanent, because now I have to solder this. So what I'm going to have to do is wrap that in some wet paper towel and zip tie it. That's one way to protect certain areas from overheating. So I was out of sequence on that construction phase there, but I think we'll be able to, to manage. I'm hoping this thing works out. I mean, when you're building stuff like this, you kind of just got to test it. So I don't know if I'm going down a dead end road here, but if I do, I'm still going to post it because at least we'll know what not to do. You can save just as much money knowing what not to do as you can knowing exactly what to do sometimes. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how I handle a heat sensitive solder joint. Actually, I'm going to do this front solder joint first. It'd probably be the best move. I'm going to hit this one first. Pretty decent. Man, where are you? Could probably use a little touch up. I'm not going to worry about it. Looks like it's sealed. Well, maybe that little spot right there could use a quick hit. Why not? I use water a lot when I'm doing this kind of solder and it also washes all that flux off of there. Okay, now we are going to install our heat resistant joint. You can use a heat resistant joint about now. Don't want to be afraid to put too much on there. You want a big old fat heat reservoir. We're going to spray this. And I'm going to zip tie it on there as well because it kind of loosens up on you. Pull out one, I get 50. Okay. Man, I'm not having any luck here. Jeez, what is with this thing? To grab the cheapest zip tie that I have on hand. Unbelievable. What the hell is with this thing? Okay, that thing don't freaking work. Okay, that'll keep them O-rings down below 212 degrees. I'm going to hurry up and blast this thing with a whole lot of heat and try to get in and out as quickly as possible before I damage those O-rings. Not going to be a pretty sight, but we'll get by.
Whole damn thing's coming loose on me. Shit. Hit that front. Okay, let's hope that took. Feels a little hot right there. Everything's still sliding okay. It would appear that we are sealed on the front. Seal on the back, a little spot right there that doesn't look very happy, but we're gonna leave it. Luckily everything worked out. I do have the vein in position and our air nozzle still working. I really see that in there. See where I'm able to still adjust its position now. Hopefully I left enough of a spud on the end of this. I am worried about that. It might simply cause a back pressure scenario. I'm gonna say that somewhere right around there, I don't know if you can see him down in there. Yeah. Right there it is. That's pushed all the way forward. So I don't know yet where I'm gonna run this. I hope that I left this long enough. I'm worried that this part of the barrel should have been another half inch longer. But we shall see. Okay, guys, I got something rather interesting to show you here. This is the test rig, this place center vice. Now, I got the bright idea to hook a vacuum gauge up to it because I was just curious to see what we might encounter here. This thing tightened up a little better. And something very strange happened that I didn't anticipate. I'm gonna hook it up, come to find out that full throttle doesn't necessarily give you the highest vacuum. Now here's full blast. Doesn't really give much of a vacuum, I think, because there's so much air blasting through there. Now I'm gonna go kind of slow this time. Now, now, as you can see, on a much lower setting, I was getting a higher vacuum. Very hard to modulate this valve. lose that vacuum so counterintuitively with this particular vacuum pump setup the most pressure you can throw through it is not the optimum amount of air that you need so there's something to do with this chamber size where a point a reverse point is achieved where you're actually losing vacuum and it's starting to achieve a little bit of pressure in the system eventually there's going to be an oil connection right here but uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to adjust this nozzle. I'm going to slide it all the way to the very end. We were pretty far off there. Okay, guys. So check this out. This is pretty cool. I'm going to throttle this vein. I got a better back. That's all the way down. I'm going to slowly move it up. spot in there somewhere right there also turning this look at that 
just having this face in the right spot inside of there. Wow. You see how temperamental it is. Incredible. That's a shame that it's doing that. So what is that? Uh, 80 centimeters of mercury. Wow, that's a sweet spot right there. Ah, it just rotated on me. good description of how temperamental the nozzle position is at the orifice. Um, the geometry is so important in this area for optimization that it's somewhat beyond my patience, I will admit. Sure, I can take the time to um, make some kind of little stainless steel wire um, annular concentric rings to hold it in the perfect position, but it's just really tedious working at this scale. Now this thing's wanting to rotate, this hose is causing it to rotate. Apparently what's happening is, is when we rotate, the nozzle's doing one of these numbers where it's, it's got like a thing like that going. Rather than a nice clean rotation, that nozzle's actually doing this at the end because it's bent or something to that effect. So you can see how temperamental it is. So me pressing on it in that direction is, is moving that nozzle. Now if I go that way, we lose a lot of action. So. I am going to, I probably should have built a little veneer scale on this thing, you know what? So we could determine the actual position because it's gonna be hard to write on that. I'm gonna go ahead and get a marker though. We're going to try and catalog position. Now, here's the funny part. <laughs> this may not be the optimum position for waste oil. This might be way too rich of an oil stream. Yeah, I can't get it in there to... You know, so... That's just one of the things about building stuff that uh, hasn't been built before. It's a lot of guesswork and failures, but hey... We learn more when we fail than we do when we succeed, and that's the God-given truth right there. You could succeed a hundred times and not know how drastically close you were to catastrophe. Uh, as a, a foreman, I've learned more about running a job through my failures than I have through success, because when you fail, what has to be done to succeed is shining you in the face like a blinding light. But when you succeed, you know, you might have just made it by the skin of your teeth and never knew it. Um, give you an example. One time I uh, did layout on some walls and we made the window heights wrong because there were transit windows on the building and I didn't take the time to look at the elevation of the print. And uh, I got my ass chewed pretty big on that one. Had to cut every window header out and raise it up nine inches. So from this day, when I go to do layout on walls, the first thing I do is check the elevation of the print to determine whether or not the building has transit windows or windows with different header heights. So, just one of those things. Okay, I'm going to get back to the subject here. I think um, that nozzle is probably just way too far back in there. This thing will spray oil out 
like a sump pump like this. So that's not gonna do us any good like this. I guess hooking these vacuum gauges up was just somewhat of a novelty. This one has been known to be messed up for whatever reason. It wasn't showing us the same five inches of mercury. So well, it's working a little bit. Better. That may just be because I've optimized the position so much. So it just goes to show you that the position of that needle is incredibly important. Also, the air pressure is reduced significantly because I've turned off the air compressor. I'm wondering, though, if maybe a decent uh, airbrush compressor couldn't handle the air flows needed. So there we have it. I'm just testing this thing out. was curious to see what type of vacuums it can pull. And it come to find out we got up around 20 centimeters of mercury there. And this is not a precision nozzle by any means. I mean, even the shape is off. We don't really want a dome shape per se. You want a divergent, convergent nozzle. However, we're not trying to pump oil, we're trying to atomize it. So I wasn't adhering to those kinematics as, as strongly as I would otherwise. I just wanted to point out one more uh, kind of a cool fact that in industry, some of the most powerful vacuum pumps that are used are a configuration similar to this. It's called an ejector. Basically what we have built here is a very crude ejector. We followed not one single law or axiom pertaining to ejector geometry, but yet we have achieved ejection. So. I just didn't want to go through the trouble. I mean, it is a complex shape, but divergent convergent nozzle is not something you just pick up at Ace Hardware. It's certainly not something that I'm capable of turning out on the lathe. I do have a taper attachment on this lathe, but this poor thing was abused so badly that I'm just gonna have to shoot it. Oops. Now we're going to be doing a little bit of spray pattern testing here. See how this works out. One of these days, I'm going to break down and buy a tripod. Okay. Spray pattern test. I have the regulator set at 50 PSI, so it's probably going to run around 45 or who knows what. It doesn't run at 50 if you have it set at 50. So here we go, definitely pumping oil. Ooh, that is very chunky. Probably still got a lot of air in the system. Okay, I'm not thinking I like that. I'm going to push it all the way to the very end to see what happens. This is the uh, smallest thing. That's a nice little spray pattern there. do is try and put some lines on this bar get an idea where we are so if like I see three lines I'll know what I'm, I'm at the setting of three lines whatever that means that is a lot of oil so I think that's what we're gonna do next we know that it will pump oil like crazy and it's got a pretty decent looking spray pattern I hope you can see that as well as I can on the camera 
I'll try to give you a little view of it. It is, uh, oh, nice. It's kind of intriguing. Look at that. Okay, I gotta quit doing that. That is just too much damn oil vapor. I don't even want to breathe that stuff. Let me get some ventilation going here. At any rate, um, these patterns don't tell me much. I just wanted to get an idea if it could spray very fine mist. And it appears that it can, in fact, do so very well. So I got a feeling that uh, this little nozzle is going to outperform the old setup by far. This one here may be going in the trash heap. Don't worry. I pull things out of the trash heap every day. For example, everything you see here came out of this trash heap. At any rate, um, yeah, man, I'm really digging this nozzle. And this is a pretty easy build. It's far easier to calibrate and to tune. Um, that other one there is just kind of an inferior setup. It really is. And I apologize to anyone who built this looking at my previous videos. It does work. Don't get me wrong. But I built it in such a way that you can't tune it. It didn't tune very well anyway. The whole nozzle thing where you have the nozzle doing this when you spin it is a problem if it just spun perfectly straight it's just really hard to build stuff on a small scale that accurate because we're talking you know three thousandths of an inch out of alignment and this thing's going to spray weird we've seen that with the vacuum pump uh, those experiments indicate that um, the tolerances are extremely tight when it comes to optimization so not only is the geometry important but the tolerances of fabrication Said another way, huge pain in the ass. That's uh, Abby talk, I guess. <laughs> he probably would have been a little dirtier than that, but I am uh, definitely uh, not completely disappointed with this nozzle. But uh, well, it just doesn't put out a big enough flame. I, I just wanted to see something better. I'm only getting 46,000 watts out of this thing, and I want to see 140,000. I think that'd be better. I'm curious to see if this nozzle works. There's a chance that this thing ain't going to work, guys. Just because it sprays oil doesn't mean much. This is very cold oil, by the way. So test day, we may have a completely different scenario on our hands. At any rate, I am going to mount this nozzle to the burner. I'm going to take that old one off of there and we're going to see what happens with this thing. Not today because it's only 17 degrees out and it's Sunday. And I certainly wouldn't do that to my neighbors. So as far as the dimensions go and all that stuff for building this thing, guys, I probably ain't going to take the time to go through and do all that unless somebody asks. But in all reality, if you're the type of person who watches these kind of videos and builds this kind of stuff, you're pretty much mentally equipped to deal with solving any problems you may encounter during the fabrication. The dimensions aren't specific. Now, maybe when you see my device operating and you decide you want to duplicate that exactly, then yes, the dimensions and orifice sizes of the nozzle will become somewhat important for an exact duplication. But I mean... Do you really need to duplicate my system to the T is the question, I guess. If, if you want the exact dimensions, I'll probably go ahead and throw those in the uh, video of, of the testing of this device. I just don't have the time today. I don't even know the dimensions right now. I just kind of throw stuff together, guys. So for the most part, I do not have that information at my disposal right now. It wouldn't take long. But at the same time, to be thorough and accurate, you're looking at about a half hour of my time measuring and writing all this stuff down and then preparing a video and all that. So for the most part, I have 100% confidence in you being able to pull this off without me giving you the specific dimensions. It's really not that critical in my opinion. But as I said, if you must, you know, I don't mind providing that service. Your guys' views definitely have been helping me out these days. 
uh, especially with financing these builds. I mean, this stuff isn't free all the time. This particular build was completely free, but uh, that's just because I have stockpiles of old experiments taken apart. But um, for the most part, uh, I will probably be placing those specifications in the testing video which I'm not sure when it's going to be done. But what I'll do is I'll place a link in the description of this video of where that information can be found if you're seriously interested in duplicating my system to the T. I, like I said, though, I mean, for the most part, just go to Hobby Lobby and buy a bag of those little copper tubes and scraps. That's where I got all my stuff. It's the cheapest route. You can get a tire bag about that thick. Full of just a bunch of mismatched pieces of copper and square tubing, brass tubing. Kind of a neat little hobby kit. That said, Hobby Lobby is the only place I have ever seen that carries this bag of just miscellaneous rods and tubes and things like that. That's where I've got all of that uh, material, except for the brass tees that we saw. So, for the most part, it cost me $20 for that bag of material. But um, I've been using it in, in experiments and builds for probably 10 years. I don't know that they even still sell that bag. I'm pretty sure they do because I think I saw it last time I was there. But uh, there you have it. Just didn't want to leave you hanging. At the end of the video shows up and then I'm just, you're wondering, well, what? Asking me where the, uh, whatever it's called. I don't know. Complete loss of train of thought there. The freaking diagrams or whatever, schematics, plans, people ask me for a lot. I just, I don't have plans. I don't build like that. I build something, and if it works, then I make the plans. And a lot of the times, the stuff I have, I don't consider it working yet. It's still a work in progress. So, I don't take the time to document that information unless some type of special incentive initiates that. And um, that is yet to happen. So, there you have it. Thanks for the views, fellas.